If you don't already know what the principle of inclusion or exclusion is, check out the video at the top of your page. And also, this is also known as overcounting or principle of inclusion or exclusion denoted as pi. So now that you've watched the video or if you already know what PIE is, let's get started with this problem. How many positive integers less than or equal to 36 are relatively prime for 36? 36 is 2 squared times 3 squared. So in order for a number to be relatively prime to 36, it can't have a factor of 2 or 3. So let's use complementary counting and subtract the number of numbers that are factors of 2 or 3. There are 36 divided by 2 equal to 18 multiples of 2. 36 divided by 3 equal to 12 multiples of 3. And 36 divided by 6 equals 6 multiples of 6. So there are 18 plus 12 multiples of 2 and 3, but then we're over counting the multiples of 2 and 3. Since the multiples of 2 and 3 are counted when counting the number of multiples of 2 and counted when counting the number of multiples of 3. So we subtract 6, we get 24. So the number of numbers less than 36 is just 36 minus 24 is 12. OK, so now let's explore a method called Euler's quotient. How many positive integers less than 36 or equal to relatively prime 36. Like just like earlier, 36 is 2 squared times 3 squared. And, and you know, we can just think about one half of the numbers are going to be multiple of 2. So one half. One third of the numbers multiples of 3. So the fraction, we can think of it as fractions. 1 minus the third of the numbers are not going to be multiples of 3. 1 minus 1 half the numbers aren't counting multiples of 2. And the reason we can do this is because 36 is a multiple of 2 and 3. Now all we have to do is multiply this by 36. And we get 1 half times 2 thirds times 36. The 2 will cancel and we're left with 36 divided by 3, which is 12. So as you can see, we got the same answer as earlier. Okay, so now let's explore the general formula for Euler's quotient. If n has a prime factorization, p1 to the e1 times p2 to the e2, all the way to pk to the ek, quotient of n, or the number of numbers relatively prime to n, is just 1 minus 1 root p1 times 1 minus 1 root p2, all the way to pk times the value root. So let's explore this with a quick and simple example. 630. 630 is just equal to 2 times 3 squared, 3 squared times 5 times 7, right? So now we can supply quotients. This P2, P1 is 2, right, it's a different color. P1 is 2. This is P2. This is P3. And this is P4. So our expression is just going to be 1 for totient of 630, which is equal to 1 minus P1 is 2, P2 is 3, P3 is, sorry, not 4, should be 5. And P4 is 7. And multiply it by 630. And this is equal to 1 half times 2 third times 4 fifth times 6 7 times 630. So now we can cancel the twos. The 6 3 cancels and gives a 2 there. And we're left with 8, 8, so 4 times 2, 8. Let's write a different color to make it clear. We have this 2 here and the 4 here left. And the 1 is in the matter. So you have 8 over 35 times 630, which is, well, 
you can just see that 630 is 9 times 70 or 18 times 35. So just going to be 18 times 8, which is 144. So now we can try a hybrid of problems that's similar to Euler's quotient, but it requires, it requires a similar technique, but we can't directly apply the formula. How many positive integers less than or equal to 216 or a relatively prime to 36? 216 being the main difference here. So again, 36 is just 2 squared times 3 squared. And in order for a number to be relatively prime, it can have a factor of 2 or 3. But as you can see again, 216 is a multiple of 2 and 3. So we can still apply this one half, one third logic. One half the numbers being a multiple of 2, and one third of the numbers being a multiple of 3. This is just 1 minus that 1 half times 1 minus 1 third times 216 which is one half times two third times two sixteen. The twos will cancel, we're left with 72. That's the answer to this problem. And now we're gonna try a very, very similar problem, except instead of 216, it's 219. So going by our standard methods, we might just think, okay, so we know that 36 is two squared times three squared. So it should just be one minus one half, times one minus one third times 219. And if you ev actually evaluate this, you get that something that's not even an integer. And that's clearly not possible since it says positive integers. How many of them are there? And of, of course it has to be an integer. So this is not correct. And the reason why this isn't correct is because 219 isn't a multiple of two. There are actually 109 multiples of 2 less than 219. So 109 or 219 of the numbers are going to be multiples of 2, not 1 half. So how can we deal with this? The simple and easy way is just to, it's just to look at the largest multiple of 2 and 3 less than 219. So we can think of 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 216, 217, 218. 219. So from the previous problem, we know that the number of relatively prime integers from 1 to 2016 is just 72. And we know that 2017 is equal to 7 times 31. So we can see that 2017 is indeed relatively prime to 36. Since 36 only has is 2 squared times 3 squared. So only has factors of 2 and 3. But 218 is even. And that means it has a common factor of 2. And it shares a factor of 2 with 36. So 218 doesn't work, and 219 is, is multiple of 3, because you know the sum of its digits is 12. So therefore, it shares a factor of 3 to 36, so again, this doesn't work either. So our answer is 72 plus 2017, which is an additional 1, which gives us 73. And there we have it, and that's where we have it. We use Euler's quotient to simplify these problems greatly. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and share any other methods you have to solve these types of problems and how you thought about this method. In addition, share this with all your friends who don't know or this question. Bye.